Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 39 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about canny edge detection. In the previous tutorial, we covered a whole bunch of other filters, including Sobel, Char, Pruitt, and they were all available in scikit-image. Now I intentionally separated canny edge because it's not just one uh, operation that it's actually doing on the image, it's actually a series of operations that it performs on the image. In fact, uh, just to understand the series, again, I apologize for a lot of text here, but let's look at step step wise. Okay, so what happens when you apply a canny edge detection? Step one, it performs noise reduction. And typically it uses Gaussian. I know that in uh, OpenCV version, it definitely uses Gaussian. Okay. And uh, the second step is once the Gaussian noise reduction is performed, a gradient calculation is performed, which is it detects the edges and along all the four directions, just like uh, your uh, Sobel. What do we do in Sobel? We actually apply a horizontal and vertical, and then it actually is uh, looking at horizontal, vertical, and the two diagonals, right? Because our kernels are in the diagonal way. And then uh, the, it follows uh, no, uh, by non-maximum suppression. So why is this done? It thins out the edges by finding the pixels with maximum value in each direction. Otherwise, you may end up with double edges. You probably see this even now, right? I mean, when you apply canny edge detection, you sometimes see these double edges. That's because your non-maximum suppression or your double threshold is not working great. And then you change your parameters, which uh, brings up the double threshold. It determines the potential edges by thresholding, by double thresholding, okay? It actually, what do we mean by double thresholding? It thresholds once and the uh, uh, thresholds, uh, it applies two thresholds, okay? Which means you have like three regions. Okay, one for strong, one for weak, and one for irrelevant pixels. Okay, so irrelevant pixels from an edge point of view means uh, they are not part of edges. Okay, so they can be thrown out. Weak, so a strong, we know that they are a part of edges. What do we do with the weak signals, right? So that's where step five comes into picture, edge tracking by hysteresis. It converts the weak edge pixels to strong based on the neighboring pixels. If one of the neighboring pixels is a strong edge, then it includes in it, otherwise it removes it, okay? So this, all of this combined is canny edge detection. And it's available both in scikit-image and OpenCV, and I use OpenCV version quite a bit. So let me jump into the coding part and uh, let's have a look at, uh, let's have a look at how to implement it, okay? Uh, again, you don't have to install anything special. It's part of OpenCV already. So if you have OpenCV installed, like pip install OpenCV-Python, you know, you should have this. So step one, read our image, just like usual. And again, uh, I don't think it also applies on uh, three channels. So I'm reading my image in, uh, I'm reading my image as gray, as usual. And uh, canny edge, the way you apply is cv2.canny. That's pretty much it. Ignore this bottom part, I'll explain that in a second, but applying canny edge is as simple as cv2.canny, your image array, okay, numpy array, and then supply thresholds one and two. Remember the double threshold step? So threshold uh, 50 and 80. This is where I got, usually get frustrated. What values make sense? It completely depends on the image. Okay, so to do that, you can kind of call this auto canny. There is nothing like auto canny, but what I'm trying to do here is define like a tolerance value or sigma value, and then calculate or find out the median value of your image. Okay, if your median is, I don't know, if it's a grayscale going from zero to 255, let's say you have a uniformly distributed histogram, so your median value is around 125-ish, for example. Okay, so find out the median, median value and I'm going to use that to define my two thresholds. And how, how am I going to do that? So first, I am going to find the threshold number one, like the lower limit. And all this is doing is, uh, remember the sigma that we defined? It's sigma percent, that many 30%, lower than the median value. Okay, so I'm taking the median and I'm going 30% low, 30% high, and I'm defining my threshold. That's pretty much it. Most of the time it works great on uh, a lot of images. I'm not saying this is magic, but this is a quick and easy way of uh, uh, finding out what these two values need to be. That's pretty much it. So here I, I'm just setting it to 50 and 80, some arbitrary values, and down here I'm calculating it actually, and then let's go ahead and plot 
canny edge and auto canny. Auto canny is basically the values that we are automatically calculating. So let's go ahead and apply. And here you go. So canny edge is doing, of course, they're all detecting edges uh, and edge, it, it, it completely depends on, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and plot it without seeing the original image. We don't know what to appreciate here. So let's go ahead and uh, this one is uh, original and let's go ahead and bring our IMG, okay? And run this one more time so you can see. So here is our input image, original image. And you can see this area is very clean so I don't see much of anything, but then there's a lot of bumps going on here. So this definitely tells me the low and high thresholds for canny that I'm using is not is not ideal. But if I just see the auto canny, it actually did a decent job. I mean, look at this region. By the way, this is a sandstone and these regions in here are clay. Clay has a lot of surface area, right? A lot of texture. So in a way, I can use edge detectors to kind of now I can eliminate all these straight edges and only look at these edges to identify the amount of clay in my image. Okay, this is how you can use edge detectors. So this is actually doing a great job. And if I close these, and let's actually look at what did we call lower and upper, right? So if you look at the lower value, it's 83. Upper value is 154. So if you know that beforehand, you could have actually typed 83 and 154 here, and you should get exactly the same looking image right there. Okay, so auto is basically my way of writing two lines of code to kind of estimate where these low and upper thresholds are supposed to be. Okay, so this is how you can use canny. And again, Sobel and canny are the two most uh, uh, famous, I should say, not even like, uh, I almost said uh, accurate, but what is accurate? It completely depends on your image. So most commonly used algorithms, I should say, approaches, Canny and Sobel. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And again, in the next one, let's actually continue the discussion of image analysis. In the meantime, please subscribe to this channel so we don't have to inform you all the time about uh, new videos being uploaded. Thank you very much.